guys. Today we're going to take a little closer look at the M1919 Browning machine gun. Now this one is of course the semi-automatic version, but it'll still be a good representation for this video. The M1919 was developed by John Moses Browning in the year of 1919. Essentially this machine gun is the next innovation of the M1917 water-cooled machine gun, which was also developed by John Moses Browning in 1900 actually. Um, he fine-tuned it and got it tested and passed in 1917 to uh, get it to the troops at the tail end of World War I, and it was uh, made the official machine gun of the U.S. Army. Now granted, we used many different machine guns during World War I, more so than the 1917. That was mostly due to production and all that kind of stuff, but that's a different subject for a different video. The air-cooled M1919 was really used heavily during World War II, Korea, and still somewhat in Vietnam as the official U.S. machine gun. Now, it's been used by 20 or many different uh, armies and countries in over 20 plus conflicts uh, throughout the world. So, uh, many different calibers as well. The original was chambered at 30-06 or 30 cal. And the next most popular would have been 308 762, which is actually what this guy is. Um, but I've seen them in 8mm, I've seen them in 762x54R, all sorts of different weird uh, calibers. But those are the two most popular. The M1919 fires using linked ammunition in either steel links, like such. Now these are obviously spent casings, no live ammo out or it fired through a cloth belt, which this guy's 250 round cloth belt and it has little individual compartments for the rounds to go in. So it'll fire e using either of those. The M1919's main use for the US Army was as a light infantry machine gun, but they also mounted it on anything, including tanks, jeeps, um, landing craft for like beach invasions, half tracks, amphibious vehicles, aircraft, uh, all that kind of stuff. The gun itself weighs in at 31 pounds, and that's not including the tripod, not including the Pinto, and not including the T&E. Just the gun itself is at 31 pounds, so it's a pretty heavy gun. The M1919's rate of fire was four to 600 rounds with uh, 2,800 feet per second as the muzzle velocity, and its effective range was about 1,500 yards. The M1919, it operated on a closed bolt recoil operated system, which is kind of more of a, not, I wouldn't say like rare, but it's not your most common style of machine gun. Um, I'll explain that in a minute, what that kind of, uh, the potential dangers of a closed bolt recoil operated machine gun such as this are, but that's how this one specifically works. The original M1919 was manufactured by three different companies, including the Buffalo Arms Corp, Rock Island Arsenal, and Saginaw Steering Gear Division of General Motors. The official production dates were from 1919 until 1945, with 438,971 being developed between those years. There were several different variants of the M1919, including the A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, and A6, the M73, and the AN slash M2. This one specifically represents the M1919A4, which was the most common one used by the US military. The operation of this thing is pretty freaking cool, if, especially if you keep in mind that the original design was really designed in 1900 by John Moses Browning. It's, it's very impressive that, to me at least, someone in 1900 came up with this and how the bolt functions and all that. It's just, to me, it's mind boggling. It's, it's really cool. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how the weapon would be loaded and fired. Essentially, there's a little lever right in front of the rear sight that you would pull back, which allows this top cover to open up. It clicks into two places. Um, you would take your belt of ammo, which would either have a pull-through tab, or if it doesn't, you can use the empty one that's got the two little ears facing the right side of the gun. This guy comes up, and you would place your ammo belt in the feeding tray, and with live rounds, the, um, the projectiles would stop, and then you would put this down over that first round, and then close your dust cover, or cover. Now the weapon is ready to be charged. 
I'm gonna go ahead and swing the gun around just so you can guys get a little better view of the next steps. And I'm gonna take this out because they're spent casings and I'm not gonna, you know, load those up, so. All right, now that the gun is turned around, uh, the belt would be in place and it would be ready to be charged and fired. So the way this works is you have to pull the charging handle back two different times. You would charge it with your palm up and just like that, the first time. The reason you're doing it palm up is because I had mentioned earlier about the dangers of this being a closed bolt system is palm up because if you're doing full auto fire on this guy, this barrel's gonna get very hot. Even though it's air cooled, it's still, if you're doing sustained fire, it's going to get extremely hot. So the danger of this weapon being a closed bolt is that the next round is gonna be in the barrel, it's gonna be chambered. So if the barrel is super hot, you potentially run the risk of the round cooking off. Now what could, in theory, happen, and I'm not saying this happened a lot, but it is something that they thought about. If the round cooks off, it's going to advance the next round in the belt, and you could theoretically run into uncontrolled, fully automatic fire. Now it might take a while for that next round, depending on how hot the barrel is. The more it fires, the hotter the barrel gets, the quicker it could fire. So they would do palm up just in case, so if you're doing it that way and it cooks off, you could break your thumb or break one of your fingers. So they always taught them to do a palm up. So when you cock this gun the first time, essentially what that's doing is it is advancing that first round of the belt to sit in front of the bolt. So the extractor slash ejector that's on the bolt face, it's preparing that to grab the round. That's what your first you know, charge is doing. When you cock that handle back the second time, what it's doing is it's causing that extractor slash ejector to actually remove this round out of the link. And that is going to kick that first link out of here. And then when the bolt actually slides forward, it is chambering the round. So that's what the second uh, charge does. Basically removes the bullet from the actual link, kicks out that first link, and then when that bolt slides forward, it's uh, chambering that first round ready to go. And at the same time, that extract when the bolt slides forward and chambers that first round, that extractor slash ejector is actually resting on that next round. And it is, uh, that's, you know, from the advancing belt that's resting on the feed tray. And it's waiting for that gun to fire. So then what happens when you pull that first, tr the, when you pull the trigger, <clears throat> it's, it's doing two things. It's firing the round and then the recoil is causing the bolt to come back and then what that is doing is that extractor ejector. So it's got the next round resting on top. And at the same time, it's pulling both the spent cartridge and the fresh cartridge out at the same time. And then that fresh cartridge drops down and actually kicks the spent cartridge out from here. So it does two things. So fire recoil causes the extractor ejector to pull out fresh cartridge and spent cartridge with the fresh cartridge on top. Fresh cartridge drops, knocking out the spent cartridge, and then that bolt you know, slides forward, it chambers the next round, and then that extractor ejector sits on the next fresh round in the advancing belt. So that's the process of that working. Now, if you're doing that full auto, it's just doing that over and over and over until you let go of the trigger. The 1919 was definitely used with great success during World War II in Korea, and like I said, a little bit more in Vietnam. Uh, the, the two big issues were A, the weight, like I said, a 31 pound gun, not including the tripod and all that. To use this as a company support weapon, it took a five man team to properly operate it. You had your squad leader, you had the gunner who actually fired the weapon, and he also carried the tripod and a box of ammo. You had the assistant gunner who actually helped feed the gun, and then he carried the uh, gun itself, and he carried a box of tools and spare parts. And then you had two guys carrying just ammo. So a five-person team to properly run this gun. After Korea, the M1919 was kind of not, not necessarily phased out, but definitely moved to more of a secondary role, specifically for mounted in fixed positions um, and vehicles kind of only. Um, especially like during Vietnam with the development of like the M60 and other lighter uh, machine guns that, you know, were self-contained as far as took one guy to carry it, maybe two at most. Um, so the, the 1919 kind of got pushed to a secondary role 
especially during Vietnam and then after, even less or so. Um, they did try to solve that issue with like models like the A6, which actually had this hideous fin style stock. It had a little band with a handle on it and it had a, tr a bipod. So you get rid of the tripod and you could run it with a two or three man crew instead of a five man crew. It was still heavy um, and it was still just not as efficient. So yeah, that's kind of just a really quick breakdown of the history and the use of the M1919. It's nothing crazy in depth, but I still hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And um, if you want to see me fire this, again, semi-auto only, because uh, I didn't have the extra $20,000 it cost to get a legally transferable version of it, a fully automatic version of it. So if anyone says, oh, why don't you get the full auto version? If you want to donate $20,000, feel free. Other than that, semis as best as I'm going to be able to do. But I digress. Um, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, continue to watch. Please don't forget to subscribe, like the videos, comment. Um, go back and watch my backlogs. Uh, you watch me shoot this and many other guns. Uh, and you'll get to see me go do history on different, you know, uh, items in my collection. So, yeah. Uh, guys, until next time, be good.